the, the business school was expanding and we had two very competitive job offers and I was working too hard and figure thought I was underappreciated in Chicago and I loved the outdoors and that was a big attraction in Manitoba, less so for Norlo. Yes, I always say I came kicking and screaming because I was actually born in California and I remembered my father talking about walk he was lived as a child in Minnesota and walking to school in boots in the snow, which I I couldn't imagine doing. So I I was amazed when we decided to actually come. And uh, yet it sort of became an incredibly interesting place to be. People, I actually was talking at one point a couple of years ago at a, to a lot of young women and describing my career. And a young woman came up to me and said, oh, Dr. Roots, this was such an interesting presentation. I'd like to know how you plan to do all this so that I could start planning my career. And I just laughed at her. And I said, you know, that's not how careers develop. What, what you have to do is to figure out sort of where the opportunities are and follow them or take advantage of them. And, we always sort of point to that's essentially how the center developed, that there was this very interesting, nice position at what was then called the Manitoba Health Services Commission, Paul Hentelet. And he was, we met him as part of when we were being introduced to sort of what was going on in, um, the healthcare system and started talking to him and realized that every time somebody went to a doctor's office, every time somebody went into a hospital, something was recorded. They took, this is the administrative data, they recorded it. And so when we realized this, talked to Paul about sort of is there We'd love to try and work with these data. Is there anything which you would like to see done? And there'd been somebody who died in rural Manitoba after they had a tonsil, had their tonsils removed, tonsillectomy. So he said, you know, could you look at where are tonsillectomies done? Are we doing too many? Are we doing too few, et cetera? And that's basically how we started working with the administrative data. Well, and uh, I think part of it is, uh, how can I put it? We were fortunate, and uh, a lot of this was fortuitous, not planned, to work in graduate school and subsequently in Chicago with some people who were pioneering in use of computers for things other than paying bills to in the use of computers for research. And so, you know, the kind of bells rang when with this possibility came up. And this sort of thing was not being done very much worldwide. The people we worked with, one in particular as a graduate student, uh, you know, well, there was recently a book written about him. Um, you know, I, I leapt at the opportunity because I realized what an opportunity it was. We had contact with people elsewhere in Canada they were starting this Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. It's now called CIFAR. Fraser Mustard, who is the former Dean of the Medical Faculty at McMaster, McMaster founding, founding, Dean. founding Dean. And he was trying to put together key sort of research opportunities across the country. 
And one of the things which he was doing was focusing on sort of the broader determinants of health. And this is not something which we had ever had any interest in, had ever worked on. But we started working with people at UBC and McMaster and sort of all across the country who were also potentially interested in what we were doing. And, and Fraser saw this as a real, the putting together administrative data as a real opportunity. So at one point when the provincial premiers had all gotten together and Don Orchard, who was head of the conservative uh, premier in Manitoba, no, we forget that Alan Archer was Minister of Health. Oh, he was Minister of Health, that's true. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah, no, we don't want to. Gary Philman was the premier. But Don Archer, he, Fraser was talking to all the ministers of health and telling them what some opportunities were and talked about the great things which we were doing with health data in Manitoba. And he volunteered, said, you know, we'll come out and introduce you to the Russes so you know, we can have a conversation about what's going on. And Fraser came, Bob Evans came from UBC, and we met, were invited to meet with the minister and deputy minister. And they were saying great things about what we had done, and they were talking about what you might be interested in. And as we were actually walking out of the room, I was talking with the deputy minister, who was Frank Maynard at the time. And I said, well, you know, we could do some of this if there was some funding to support it. And he said, you know, I would not worry about funding. The funding would be there. And basically that's how the Manitoba Center started is they agreed at first, they agreed to one year funding and said, because you're so terrific, you can go out and raise money and then support yourself. And we did a, some projects for them. And they said, of course, we've been supporting ourselves because we've been getting federal funding for the research previously. And we said, well, we could continue to support ourselves, but that means we're not gonna do any re more research for the Ministry of Health. And that's when they decided, oh, well, maybe we should continue. And so they then signed on to continue for another what, three years, I think, and continued beyond that. Two things that I credit less for that I was really unhappy about at the time was when he decided it was really important that we have a population registry. So we know when people are in the province and when they leave the province. And I had written a paper, which had been accepted for publication, looking at complications after surgery. And Les said, well, you, you should not publish it the way it is because if you wait until we sort of implement this, we can tell whether people didn't have a complication because they really didn't have a complication or that we don't really know because they've actually left the province. And so I said, well, wow, you know, it's not going to affect much. It's just stupid to do, but we, that's what we did. And, you know, that population registry has been one of the most important things in terms of the power of looking at a total population that the center has. Another thing that got developed, which was we were, had talked to, we were trying to get, encourage more funding of some of the things that we were doing. And so what was the, who funded the concept of the Lupina Foundation? The Lupina Foundation. And I had, been corresponding with this guy and finally talked him into, this was a guy who headed the foundation, had come to Manitoba, had spent a day talking with me and a couple of other Pat people, Martins. Pat Martins. We were trying to persuade him to invest in X, I don't even remember now, it was basically in Manitoba Center. And he 
clearly was just not that interested in what we were proposing. So as we were walking out the door, I stopped so he could introduce him to Les and said, uh, and he, I don't know, asked Les, said, what are you working on? What do you think we should be doing? And Les had this crazy idea about a concept dictionary that what we should do would be to document what the center was producing in terms of programming, in terms of how things are defined, et cetera. And again, this was something which I expected somebody else to figure out. It was not my direct interest, et cetera. So I was quite not appalled, but shocked when Mr. Lupina Foundation sat down and funded less for, I don't know, several years. You know, almost a million dollars. Almost a million dollars to set up the concept dictionary, which has turned out to have more visitors than, you yeah, know, we have two, about imagine, two million hits a year. Which is pretty incredible. And so I think that, uh, again, came out of something which different people sort of see very different things as possibilities. And one of the, one of the <coughs> excuse me, interesting things about the concept dictionary that Elizabeth is doing now is she's using it as the, the source for code. So if you make the concept dictionary specific enough, and put in things like ICD-9 codes, you can cut and paste from the concept dictionary into your SAS code directly and run it. So again, that is sort of an evolution of something that's, that's been developed. I guess another thing which I've been sort of observing has been how the center has evolved and developed when Pat Martins took over as director of the center, you know, she had been around forever. She sort of knew what was going on, but she had a real sense of getting the regional health authorities involved and doing the reviews, which they built on, doing incredibly sort of interesting things and setting up advisory groups for each of the deliverables, which had people who, were, who knew something about what the issue was, which was being studied. And you know, that was a very interesting expansion, change, enrichment of what the center was trying to do. And Alan has bringing, being a clinician who knows and understands many things about um, the clinical aspects of what the data is. And during his period, there's been this enormous expansion of clinicians working with the data. And there are numerous other uh, Lisa Licks and you know, various people have just started to recognize how incredibly valuable this is as a resource. And I'm continually, I think Marnie put together this wonderful um, chart of where all the data sets come from, all the new data sets which have been added. It's just, I mean, to me, the only problem is how do you now start a project without getting everything involved? I mean, it's just a, an enormously rich, interesting thing which has been created here, which I, I think the center has every reason to be quite proud of. Yeah, and uh, one funny story that we heard from Ray Zedaber, at the, who's at the University of Toronto, was some grant, she said it was a grant that you applied for less. I mean, this was 20 years after the fact, so I don't think she did any serious confidentiality violation. She said she was on a committee and she said that Les proposed to 
link these two files and to do some sort of analysis of, I don't even remember what it was. And, and the people on the grant committee said, well, it's a good idea, but it's impossible. And, and Reza said, oh, you wouldn't believe the things they can do in Manitoba. Of course they can do it. Let's give them the money. And, uh, you know, the, I, I think it's indicative of these po possibilities I was thinking about this morning, the incredible possibilities for different kinds of research that can be done using the data. I mean, there are papers that are coming out well all the time now uh, of the relatively new things that can be done with the data sets which we have, the, you know, with uh, full confidentiality protection with the DEI identified data. But because the, the system is set up the way that it is, gives incredible research opportunities. Focusing on families. Yeah. You know, generations. The, the multi-generational research, or I just thought about the, well, the paper <clears throat> that we did our last uh, uh, video on where we looked at children moving from one school to another and one part of the province to another. That's very hard for most research centers to do with, but easy for us to do.